Well, that's what we are focused on here today on the program. And Mr. Jerry Chukweke, a member of the APC, joins us this morning. Thank you for coming on today. Well, thank you, everybody. Good morning. Well, first of all, what people like to understand, what do you think is really going on about this protests we're seeing? Well, you know, I think we need to have this conversation because the issue, in my view, is the big picture. By the way, it so happens that the 29th of May was the date of the, if you would, the proclamation of the state of Biafra. And it does coincide with the Democracy Day as we have it today. But the big picture really is that I see no ideological attachment. There is no ideology, in my view, behind this business of the sovereign state of Biafra. It appears to be more of a vehicle of frustration, economic frustration, economic marginalization. By the way, it ought not be news to us because for decades we've been warned by the UN, by the World Bank, that 35 to 40 million unemployed youth is an existential threat to Nigeria. This is what we're dealing with today. Now, I take it further. It is obvious from what's happened in many parts of northern Nigeria because of the insurgency that hundreds of thousands of youth of the southeast and south-south who were small business people, petty traders, shop owners, were all dislodged. And they have moved, retreated, if you would, relocated, all around Abuja suburbs, coming down to Kogi State, B B the Edo State, rivers, cross rivers, Kwaibum, southeastern states, looking for ways to restart their lives. And with no opportunities and support, this is largely, in my view, what is clearly a burst, a blow up of frustration, economic marginalization perception, and the fact that the job we need to do in Nigeria is to focus strongly on opportunities for our youth, youth empowerment, employment, economic opportunities. This is about bread and butter. And I think the big picture is what we must focus on. So we can get away from the issue of Biafra, the bad word, and all of that. And look at what's really going on. It's a big picture issue. It's jobs and economic employment, economic empowerment for our youth. And what we must do to focus on the youth. The youth feel marginalized, in my view. They feel that they have no champions. There are a few of them. I'm happy to talk about them. But we now need not just the federal government but states and local governments to focus on this clearly an existential threat. How do we create opportunities for the youth of Nigeria across this country? And that's the issue. Do you think that security agencies have this understanding, uh, as you put it, given the way they're going about addressing this? Well, one of the challenges we face in Nigeria today, in my view, is a dis what is clearly a communications deficiency. The youth is not being engaged. We need to find new language. We need to find new approaches of engagement. Look, when people become desperate, it is largely a loss of hope. A lot of Nigerians, and particularly the youth, are looking for the light at the end of the tunnel. And we need to be guided in that direction. We clear milestones with hope. We, have, we, we must be able to sell Nigerians and the youth what it is we're doing and how we intend to get there so they can see the light at the end of the tunnel. They can see the prospect of food on the table, employment, roof over their heads. And so there's a communication deficiency in my view because the youth is not fully engaged. And quite frankly, Nigerians are not really being engaged effectively. Well, and we have opportunities to do that. That's part of the leadership we must now focus on. But why do you think that they chose this particular path to express this frustration? Because there are several methods, several means that you could choose to express yourself without necessarily, uh, as the police say, disturb public peace. Well, I, nobody advocates violence. Certainly, uh, no government can tolerate that neither. Uh, and you cannot blame this on President Buhari. The fact of the matter is 
that there's also this perception in the southeast and south south of what many young people perceive as President Buhari's quote unquote unfavorable body language. And they look at the appointments within the presidency and they look at what's happened in the National Assembly in terms of leadership and how they feel that the South South and South Southeast are not adequately represented and, and, and who the champions of the South South and Southeast are. And in fact, some of them go further to say, ah, they're now being categorized as Jonathan's people. Let me make this point. I was in the East during the burial of uh, former governor, let me say, and you could get the temperature. And the perception was that Governor Lamase had died because the federal government was in the process of extraditing him, had made a decision to do so to the UK. And, and he, quote unquote, couldn't take it. His health couldn't take it. And, and he collapsed and died. That was the perception. Perception sometimes can be as good as reality. The point I'm making is this. This is not a President Buhari's issue, per se, because this has gone on. Youth unemployment. And look at the country like Nigeria, that by 2015, the United Nations and all the records that are available suggest that we'll be in the top five most populous nations of the world. And our GDP is going the opposite direction. And, and the youth feel disenfranchised, not just in the southeast and south-south, but across Nigeria. So I, I, I think, think the big picture is we need to wake up to the responsibility to start to provide, not just at the federal government level, states and local governments, clear, crisp programs on how we go about dealing with this existential threat, because they too, the youth of Nigeria, are very important stakeholders. And you know, we must I, I, I think, uh, Mr. Chukuki, that's, that's just on the one hand. Y yes. You look at what is happening in Nigeria's southeast, uh, you look at what is happening in Nigeria's northeast, you can adduce that to saying, okay, we have uh, a huge amount of Nigerian youth who are jobless, who are asking for uh, one or two things from the government. But concerning the south,